Welcome. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome to the spooky, the spooky special cast. <laughs> the theme tune. This. I thought of a good theme song for this podcast. What? So now, nah. ah, and then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. You, me- you mean, you mean not uh, you mean not this. Not that. Oh, 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 oh yeah. <laughs> I have that on my phone, and I also have. Hold on. What else do I have? I have this on my phone. Hold on. I have this on my phone. Oh. <laughs> I have that as like. Oh, that that first one is my alarm tone, by the way. Christ. That's what I wake up to. <laughs> it gets me awake pretty, pretty, uh, it, it succeeds. I would in getting me awake. I should say so. Bloody. Um, we're here today, um, with Greer, Heather, and Heather's sister, Sarah. Woo! Hello. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hi. Um, to talk about Five Nights at Freddy's. It's friggin' awesome. Which I feel like is over talked at this point, but fuck it. Oh, okay. We have fun talk we have fun talking about it yeah. and that should be the point that we have fun. Yeah, that's, that's always the point. And what observations could they have possibly made that we can't make in a much more succinct and I think intelligent fashion? Okay, Fran, you never got to tell this story on the podcast because you've not been on for a while. But what is the story of how you got into it? Oh, right. Because I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, it's, well, it's sort of interesting. I'm not a gamer, really. I mean, I've, I've played the Portal games, which I really love. Um, but I'm not up to date with the gaming world. Um, and then, But I just heard like a lot of people tweeting about Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, so I asked Greer if she'd heard of it. And her and Heather are big Markiplier fans. So they, was like, they were like, of course we've heard of it. We're like, <laughs> have we heard of it? Oh my god! <laughs> and then, then like, we... no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie right now. I, I am on the Five Nights at Freddy's wiki page where all the theories and rumors are, just so I can like scroll through a few because that's what we're gonna do. And a little eight bit uh, puppet guy with a crying child just floated by on the screen. Yeah, it does it. I, I'm not even fucking lying about that right now. I have now. been on that I, wiki uh, a good portion of the week, and that got me going for the first time I saw it. I was like, oh, oh that's a nice touch, guys. <laughs> um, but, like, I I got into it through, a kind of like a lot of people, I got into it through galore. Um, so I watched the Game Theories episode about it on everyone's recommendation and absolutely loved it. Um, and then watched the Markiplier Let's Play and completely fell in love with Markiplier. Um, and then I watched the second game theory. That, that happened, that happens to everyone well, eventually, I, I, actually. <laughs> I have mentioned this on the podcast before, unless it's one of the ones that didn't get recorded, but I found him really quite irritating at the beginning, um, and now I fucking love him. I'm a complete <laughs> convert. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I've watched all the gameplay of, um, uh, FNAF 3. And that's where I'm at. What about you guys? Oh, and I played it up until almost the end of the first game. So that's where I'm at. I've watched all of Mark's videos on Five Nights at Freddy's 1 through 3. I've watched uh, some Game Grumps playing Five Nights at Freddy's. Not that they finished it, but, you know. And I watched some Jacksepticeye, a little bit of Yami Mash. And I only beat the first night on one. I just bought two because it was half off on Steam. But I'm a big baby, so I haven't played it. <laughs> yeah, I'm also... I have not played any... Like, full disclosure, not played any of the games. But I've read the wiki multiple times, and I've watched many, 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 many videos. Uh, but I am too much of a wuss to play any sort of horror game myself, because I am a huge pussy. <laughs> full, full disclosure right now. I... I like... I, I don't think you even need to. I think the Let's Plays are so extensive. I think you can have a pretty comprehensive understanding of this game. Like, and, and really, to be honest, like, it was a bit of an eye-opener. Like, 
how extensive let's plays are like you can learn a lot about the gameplay like uh, you know this was the first let's play i watched from beginning to end and i realized how much you can learn about the gameplay like i don't think i would have been able to mm -hmm. get the first four nights so quickly without watching mark play it just no way yeah the only the only time i don't watch uh a let's play of something is when um i'm i fully plan on playing it at some point mm. like um i remember when uh who was it that was playing the last of us mark played it but bob played it no 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 someone else oh cry cry was playing the last of us and i stopped like halfway through his let's play because I was fully planning on playing the game. Like, I was going to go to Redbox that day and uh, rent it from uh, rent it from the Redbox for a few days. So I just didn't watch his... Like, I was watching it up until that point, but about halfway through, I stopped. See, I... Or about... No, it was about three quarters of the way through the game, actually. I had watched the Game Theories episode on Five Nights at Freddy's, so for me, it was like, I, I knew the school, so watching the Let's Plays... It, it was just about helping me figure out how the hell to play the game, because I'm not really a gamer. Um, but I, I knew that I wouldn't have any danger of it being spoiled for me, because I'd already seen the Game Theories episodes. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, to be, to be honest, like, playing it anyway, like, <laughs> it's such a different experience, because, it, I mean, it is really, like, it's, it's like you're there, it's so hard to describe, but I've never... I've never quite had an experience like it. Like, I get so tense playing it. Like, where I mm -hmm. can't breathe, and I feel like I'm on the edge. Like, and I get yeah, so angry. Like, I totally definitely... get the angry gamer thing. I get it. Oh, yeah. It's totally Stress Simulator 2014. It definitely is. Like, anx like Anxiety Simulator. Like, it's... You're just sitting there, and, like, most of it's not even scary. It's just kind of creepy. You know? Because you're there all by yourself in the dark. What's the 2014 thing? Sorry, Gray, you've completely lost me. Like, on any end of, like, any simulator game, like, what was it? Like, when Surgeon Simulator came out, it was just originally Surgeon Simulator 2013. And that kind of started with, like, Microsoft. Like, Microsoft would release a new flight simulator game every year. Now I have to explain gamer uh, things to you. Oh my god. <laughs> we need to cut all this explaining, Greg, because it's so fucking... It's just me being dense and it's going to bore the shit out of everyone. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so that's yeah. the game that stresses you out. Okay, I'm with you. Yeah, and again, that's why I can't play it because I have really bad anxiety and really bad stress. And I'm like, I can't... See, I find with like horror <laughs> anything, horror movies, horror games, that like... Because I am a really anxious, wussy person in real life, I find... But you love horror yeah, that's, shit, that's the thing. That, that's what I'm saying, because it's therapeutic. It's a, a way of me being in control of when I'm afraid and when I'm not afraid and how I'm afraid. Like, uh, So I get all my fear out, and then it's not so difficult to deal with in real life, or at least that's the theory, whether it works or not. I don't know. Well, I, find, just, I like horror a lot, too, and then I, I have anxiety, and I just... A lot of it, at this point, is very formulaic, and it's not really scary. As far as uh, playing Freddy's go, Look. it's knowing the scare is going to happen, and the anticipation that really freaks me out, because I don't like scares yeah. at all. But mm -hmm. I like, uh, the main thing that got me into Five Nights was the uh, backstory, because typically when something has a creepy and fucked up backstory, I get really, really into it, like Bioshock is a good mm -hmm. example of that, because if you pay attention to what's going on, Specifically, like it was in the audio diaries in Bioshock, it's pretty fucked up. And I'm yeah. just, I get really nerdy and shit about that, so I just obsess over it. And that's pretty much what happened with Five Nights. <laughs> I totally agree. I do think the lore is fascinating. Um, I like, I wanted, I wanted to do this. You go ahead. You go. Ahead. Oh no, I was, I was gonna say I think it would make a sweet little indie horror movie. Like I kind of had an idea, before, but yeah. like I can talk about that later. <laughs> um so what what gave me the idea was heather was talking about her and sarah just staying up at night talking about theories and i just wanted to do a whole thing of like what are your theories for the backstory of this game since now i'm assuming that the series is over like i don't think there's gonna be another game I think it's at very least over as far as, like, the overarching story with the uh, kids haunting. 
the animatronics. I think yeah. he obviously left it open at the end of three for something to go on with Springtrap. So I, I don't know if he just left it open in case he decides to do it or not, but I don't I mean, know. The, it's like, it's, it's his story, it's his law, so like, you know, he could, I mean, not necessarily retconning, but like, you know, the story can go on for as long as he, I mean, it's like with Harry Potter, like she said, you know, that the saga was finished, but she might, you know, if she got the urge, write another book. And I guess it's the same with Cawthorn. Like, if he decides years later that he wants to revisit that world, you know, he will, and the story will carry on. But I think, yeah, artistically, it makes sense to finish it where it's, where it is. You know, the it's a kind of three-act structure and the story has been told. Um, although, like, on a, in a totally biased way, like, I would love another five nights at freddy just because i love i love that world i love visiting that world it's just such a cool kind of concept so yeah, yeah. i mean i'd be open to another one yeah me too <laughs> all right so what were what were some of the theories that you guys were talking about because there are a lot of popular theories like who killed phone guy and who caused the bite of 87 and yeah. stuff like that um, the main thing I was just, uh, I was trying to figure out, like, the, the timeline for the stuff that happened, like, the with the whole, uh, the kids getting killed, and then... Yeah, what what is your timeline? Because you said you're, you have made a timeline. I have, and I have it here on a piece of paper, because I am a nerd. <laughs> Aren't I adorable? You guys read, <laughs> read that okay. out. Ever. This one, um, I can't remember... This one, the first thing is kind of just a guess, but it, it's kind of based on some of the stuff that was said in, I think it was three, where, to the diner? Did that I was in two. Okay, in two, Sarah's correcting me. Um, the, I had the thought that the first child to be killed was killed actually not at Freddy Fazbear's, but the diner that was bought out and turned into Freddy Fazbear's. Fred, Fred Bear family yeah. diner? And that it was uh, an employee from the diner had killed a child and then moved with basically the company and became a date, uh, security guard at Freddy Fazbear's and then continues to kill more children. And at the um, Freddy Fazbear's, this would be basically going on uh, around the time that you're, the character you're playing would be working there, so it would be Five Nights 2. Um, the first child to be murdered would possess the marionette, and as shown in one of those uh, mini-games, gives life to the children that are being killed at Freddy Fazbear's by having them possess each of the animatronic characters, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. And... Um, because the children were killed by a security guard, the animatronics then attack just security guards in general, including the player, uh, which is, I think it's Jeremy Fitzgerald is the character's name, that one? Uh, in the second one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, let's see, oh, God, I can't read my own handwriting. Jesus. I don't see how. Uh, okay. Per purple guy, which would be the killer and the security, the other security guard moves to the day shift which is why Jeremy Fitzgerald takes over for the night shift, which is the character you're playing into um, probably because he's being attacked by, as there's a point where he says the uh, last guy complained about conditions and uh, <clears throat> oh there's a point in, I think, three, where they mention the animatronics. Yeah, it would be three. That are, like, half animatronic, half um, mascot. They're capable of supposedly retracting the animatronic, ex uh, what is it, endoskeleton. endoskeleton. And being used as, so that the employee can step inside. And it's mentioned at one point that they, um... I mean, well, that's pretty much confirmed in three, correct? Yeah, that is. Yeah, it is explicitly mentioned that it's that they do that, and then there's a point where they say that they're deemed unsafe, and uh, that they're going to be basically dismantled uh, 
So I would had it in my head that the purple guy went to dismantle, was basically given the task of dismantling. It was also said that they were being dismantled at a sister location. Um, so basically he goes in, given the job of dismantling the suits. And while he's there, he's attacked by the animatronics and puts on the spring bonnie suit in order to you know, confuse them because of the whole rule of endo- they think you're an endoskeleton out of a suit and that's not allowed. And then when he gets in spring trap, he, he's killed, obviously, from that one scene in uh, 3, the mini game. And then uh, there's a phone call. Uh, in three on night five, mentioning that the spring bonnie suit has not- been noticeably moved, and there are safe rooms that are mentioned in there dur- throughout um, Five Nights Three. Uh, basically, it's a, a safe room where you go to bleed out if a suit malfunctions and you get crushed, like what happens to uh, Purple Guy. But. Yeah. There's a point where it says that um, the safe rooms are going to be sealed and basically anything that you left in there, you're shit out of luck, you don't get it anymore. So I would say they may or may not have known, because it's established in the first game that they have a habit of if something happens to you, like if you die or, you know, they're going to clean up the pizza place and then report you as missing. So they obviously don't have an issue with hiding an accidental death. So the management of Freddy's might actually have been aware of spring traps present in the safe room, and that's why they decided to seal them up with him inside. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the player character, Jeremy Fitzgerald, in, in 2, is moved to the day shift because they mentioned the day shift security guard basically went missing. Or I forget what the exact wording was, but it was he's the day shift security guy was gone. So Jeremy Fitzgerald takes over. Over, and his day, first day on the day shift is when the bite of 87 happens, which is why yeah. in six, in, is there, in the extra night, the next, it's a different person. So basically, Springtrap is, is boarded up and forgotten about for 30 years until he's unearthed. And then the events of uh, one and then one happens and then 30 years later, he's dug up and the events of three happened. Okay. That's what I got. Can I ask you something? Can I ask you a couple of things, Heather? Yes. Um, is there no way that um, Phone Guy can also be Purple Guy? As in, Phone Guy, phone guy can't be the killer, can he? Because he was killed at the end of Five Nights 2, and the killer, Purple Guy, doesn't get killed until Five Nights 3. Is that right? No, purple well, guy. Suppose, supposedly, Five Nights Three, the mini games in there are like what? stuff I, that happened. It, it wasn't yeah. happening at that time. I think, oh, okay. That was yeah, because that was going to be my second question. Because if Purple Guy got killed during the timeline of Five Nights Three, then it wouldn't make any sense for the archive footage to be talking about them having to have moved. Yeah, stri- I think. The way I thought of it when I was watching more play is that the mini games in three are like um, kind of prequely stuff, like telling you what happened uh, oh. with the kids and Purple Guy, and then two is actually supposed uh, Five Nights Two is actually a prequel, so it happened yeah. before one. Yeah. So I don't think that just based on the way Foam Guy talks and stuff, I don't think he's Purple Guy. You don't think he's Purple Guy? I no. He- I mean, but is there any actual evidence to suggest that he definitely isn't? Um, I think the way he died was um, pretty self-explanatory for that one. I, I heard yeah. that he's either... I, I heard that, like, his body is either inside Chica or inside Golden Freddy. Those are the two that I've heard. But I was going to say Golden I... Freddy might be um, the first kid that got killed because... The marionette isn't in one, probably, you know, logically because he hadn't created that character yet. But if marionette, like, the um, the animatronic was completely gone in Five Nights 1 and maybe the kid didn't have another character possess- to possess, so he just kind of shows up as a hallucination of Golden Freddy. Probably because I think fo- it seems pretty clear that um, Purple Guy or the killer was using a Golden Freddy suit to lure the children into... Uh, like the back room to kill them or whatever, where we actually killed them somewhere in Freddy Fazbear's. 
the- I I heard another one, and I I think this might lead somewhere to like another, but like that the reason that purple guy has a badge on is because like he might be a cop. Oh, but I think also, that- but it also might lead to him like maybe he was also a security person. Yeah. So it's like guess, yeah. it's like either or, you know. Well, uh, what I was going to ask is when he gets killed, um, as in when Phone Guy gets killed um, at the end of Five Nights One, why couldn't that be what happened in the mini game where Purple Guy gets killed by going into Springtrap? Do you know what I mean? I thought about that, actually, because I found it very interesting that the two parallel each other very well. Yeah, Um, yeah, that's what I... The only thing that... And the only thing that had me thinking about that was... I figured that given what you see in that mini game, you look in the building and it it the map is exactly like the layout of the first game's pizzeria. This would be the mini game in Five in, Nights Three. In Five Nights Three, yeah. And you look and there's little in in the mini game there's little mice running around and the bathrooms are boarded up and there's water dripping. So it looks like, to me anyway, that this place had been cold for a while, long time. So I figured that, that this thing with um, Purple Guy getting killed didn't happen until after the ending of the first game because it seems like the place has been boarded up for a long last time. So, oh, okay. Right, I'm with you. Just by the way that it looks. Because what, it, if it took place... Why Purple Guy... Why oh, because- even be there if the place had been boarded that's up. What for... I said. That's what I was trying to figure out. I don't, I can't explain the boarding up, but as far as like the mice and the water dripping, there are points through well, in one and I think two or three that they made the point that uh, one of the reasons that Freddy's was going to close is because of how sh- awful the conditions were. Like, yeah, that was mostly the health one. sanitation and stuff yeah, like that. you could tell that in one as well because there's like wires so, hanging out yeah. of shit. So it might, you could also explain that as just they're really a shitty establishment. Yeah, but that doesn't yeah. explain what it the doesn't explain the board of uh, boarding the bathrooms up unless, you know, they just went to shit and they're like, fuck it, we boarded it up. Yeah. I thought at first when I saw that in the mini game that it was the safe room being boarded up, but then when you go up and follow the the that's purple the Freddy. Room. That's supposed to be the safer because and the you, um, the animatronics don't recognize that area. They can go in, and that's why it's this area. So. If you look at the map on the mini game, and you look at the map on the cameras of the first game, it's exactly the same. Yeah. And that hallway is where those two boarded up rooms are. Those should be the bathroom rooms. Well, you couldn't see the bathrooms in one either. You could no, only see that the, hallway. The hall. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Maybe they boarded it up as a reference to the fact that you. Couldn't go in there. Well, yeah, that would make sense. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Fatty. No, oh, yeah, the parallel between Purple Guy and, that, and the phone guy dying. Um, so I thought about that, and I was like, well, if you remember when phone guy dies, you can hear um, clues from that each of the animatronics are pretty much made up on him. So you hear, you hear Freddy's chime. Yeah. And you hear what sounds like Foxy knocking at the door. There's also yeah. the pretty sound yell. that um, Bonnie and Chica make. I don't remember what sound it's it is. A, it's like a moaning. Yeah, the moaning sound. Yeah. But if you're watching the mini game from the third game, he's already dismantled all the puppets. So it would be kind of weird if you heard all that going on. Unless, yeah. of course, it was maybe you could argue that there was the ghost of the children still making those noises. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that's what that's... I thought. But then again, they do sound really mechanical. So I mean, the the thing I know for sure is that he died at the, phone guy died he... at the end of Five Nights One. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like that's that's uh, that's a fact, correct? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I know, that's a fact. I but mean, yeah, there is the uh, like I kind of figured that was just like a um, this is what happened to you if you don't play right type situation. Well, yeah. But um, there's a line in there when he's calling you before he dies, asking you to check in the spare parts room, which I assume was basically go look for my body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which would wouldn't like. make sense if Springtrap was trapped up in the safe room, because at that point of the events of Fun Eye, Fun Eye 1, the safe rooms have already been boarded up. Yeah. 
Um, I was say something. Oh, uh, I was also thinking, like, when we were talking about the, the it, did it happen during the events of Five Nights 1, there's no explanation for why Purple Guy would come back and dismantle them, except that I can see, except for they mention in the um, tapes that they play in Five Nights 3 that they were dismantling the old animatronics because they were deemed dangerous. Mm. But those were the old suit animatronics they were Yeah, dismantling. well, the Golden Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, and Foxy weren't those. It was only Springtrap, and I think it was supposed to be like a Golden Freddy. Yeah, but he doesn't specify. No, we don't. He, they could have had one of each, for all we know. There's a lot of ambiguity to it. No, I know. That's why he he enjoys this, this Scott. Oh, yeah. He enjoys the... He, he refuses to tell um, any facts um, because he enjoys pe- watching us squirm, I guess. You know, sure. what I, you know what's amazing is that he, he like, had a series of, like... Um, games before Five Nights at Freddy's like teaching kids about Jesus. I think that's yes. just such an odd like um <laughs> juxtaposition. And, I like, mean, he what... he definitely he definitely has confirmed that they are haunted. Yes, he did yeah. Say in quotation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I think a lot of this was might have been just he came up with one and then when it became so popular, he added to it, and so there's probably going to be continuity errors. Yeah, yeah. So I, no, I, I don't think any theory is going to completely no. ac- account for everything, which is why I got as close as I thought I could with uh, what I came up with. But I'm just uh-huh. thinking Somebody... like there there is a linear plot, but like yeah. so you don't want to go into all the extra stuff. Like you can still enjoy it in that way. Like, uh, I think all the all the extra stuff, all about, like, who is Purple Guy, who's Home Guy, you know, who are the security guards, you know, are the children free? Like, that's all That's all for people that are real, like, completists. Um, yeah. Or huge dorks. Um, uh, do, do, you, do you think he'll ever explain it? Do you think Cawthorn will ever, like, or do you think that's my, that might be what another game would be? you know, filling in the blanks of the story, or do you think that's just something we'll never get? I don't think he's, I don't think he's really going to put that into detail. I I think if he... Well, we do, we do know that there is one location that we have not, like, of of course we haven't been to Fred Bear's Diner. Yeah. Ah. And then there was another Freddy Fazbear's Pizza at some point between Fred Bear and Five Nights 2, which is... Where the murders happen, correct? I, that was uh, on, uh, there, that was I on thought that the way theory. Five Nights 2 happened, I thought it was like... I mean, again, it's pretty ambiguous, but um, it seemed to me like it was happening at the one you were working at. At least... The- well, no, because the, the, the unknown one, the one in between Fred Bear and Five Nights 2 in 1987 was the one with, like... Because in uh, Five Nights 2, which happened in 1987, they were talking about, like, uh, their their reputation and stuff like that. Like, they were talking yeah. about that in the phone calls, correct? That's, they were, and that's one of the reasons I thought maybe one of the kids had been killed at the diner. Yeah. Because they are apparently already had a bad reputation. Yeah, I think that, that that's, like... Uh, that comes across in one of the mini games as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, d- isn't one of the first mini games set up Fred Bears because there's there's only one animatronic, and yeah, I was kind of of the opinion that that's where the first death happened. Yeah, there's there's one with Golden Freddy going around and giving cake to kids, and then there's like yeah. a crying child outside. Yeah, and then Purple yeah, Guy. Might, who might be the puppet kid? Did they not think at some point because of the tear tracks? Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah. I mean, that's one, yeah, that's one theory. But no, the the one in between Fred Bear and the one in 1987, they're, like, I think it's known that there is an unknown one that, like, that's where they happened because it was closed down for health reasons. Because that's the one where where people were like, oh, there's, like, a corpse smell coming from, <laughs> coming from Freddy or whatever, you know? Perfectly normal stuff. Yeah. Because they, re- they refer to it in Five oh, yeah. Nights 2, which is the prequel. Yeah, 
I yeah, that might be like the place that you know Purple Guy goes if he's dismantling those animatronics, and that would mm-hmm. be another reason why it would be all boarded up and and it just happened to have the same layout as one. Yeah. I'm trying to think about what like what would be original because if they set it at Fred Bears, that would just be another prequel, and that. Would- mm-hmm. And also, there was only one murder, so that wouldn't be original, or it wouldn't be interesting. Um, they could do a copy cat killer. Eat. That might be kind of cool. mm. what, like, like a copy cat killer. That might. Be cool. mm-hmm. It's still the think, it, it, oh, the God. way it was set up. It that somebody just with the mention of uh, something salvaged and put up for auction, and like that little news article. If you brighten it, you can see spring trap oh, in the background of the picture. God. So mm-hmm. the way it seemed like he was setting it up, like somebody buys Springtrap and then the series would continue from there if he wanted to. Yeah, like what Fran was saying, a copycat killer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that like, that's just me shooting the shit. Like, I think Heather has the right idea. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really, really good point. Because then you could set it anyway. You wouldn't even have to set it in a restaurant. Yeah. Like some, like, weirdo art collector. Yeah. Some fucking rich, rec- you know, recluse. Murder mobilia is actually a thing, so... I would yeah. Be- yeah. Totally Somebody yeah. buy it knowing what it is. How would they know, though? It's really weird that they don't... Well, like, you we have know to... Know that that factor in besides, that... The, the, besides your players, it's obvious that other people in this universe know this shit's going down. It's usually probably, like, it's like full guy knows this shit is going on. And the managers have some idea that something's it's going on. It's made abundantly clear that the management doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, like, I wonder how far... Yeah, that it's obviously, it like... It has to be, like, a lore of the area, because that's why they started the haunted house. It's because they're like, oh, this freaky, right. fucked up shit happened, so we're gonna make a horror ho- a haunted house type deal out of it. And there was supposedly somebody who was arrested and convicted for the yeah. murders. Whether or not that was... I don't think it may, would make sense if Purple Guy was the one that got arrested. I feel like he, it was probably somebody was wrongly convicted. Unless mm-hmm. maybe he had an accomplice or something like that. But I feel like yeah. it was probably the wrong guy. So as far as like the lore of the community is, they probably think you know justice was served mm. type deal. So mm-hmm. it's just like... Oh, this crazy people, shit happens. Yeah, people love that shit. I mean, like, because at first I was like, well, why the fuck would anyone take their children to that restaurant? That's completely fucked up. But then I'm yeah. like, of course they would. Like, nobody actually thinks this shit is going to happen to them. They just like oh, all yeah. the mystery and, like, intrigue surrounding it. I mean, it's like all the Blue Witch stuff. Like, and also, Chuck E. Cheese, a load of murders happened there and people still go there. even though it's fucking creepy. Mm. Yeah. Chuck E. Cheese is just creepy in general. Or we were referring to the, uh, the shooting. Yeah. That, well, that was, like, fucked up in 20, you know, that wasn't, like... Yeah, that was one of those, like, uh, guy goes postal type deals. That's not something you blame on the restaurant, that was something you blame, obviously, on the killer. Yeah, but that's oh. usually what happens. Like, with something like that happens, they're like, oh, it's one crazy guy. Eh. See, in the, in the case of real life, that's stupid. But in the case of this game, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> because clearly the management doesn't give a fuck. And they're perfectly willing to hide anything that goes wrong. Right. But then the customers don't really know that. That's the thing that I'm just... Like, All they know is why they keep coming missing. back. Right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a lot of dead air that's going to have to get edited out. <laughs> Yeah, because we're all, like, kind of thinking. Yeah, this you has know? a lot of thought. A lot of thought that we're going to have to edit out later. Or Greer is going <laughs> to have to edit out later. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Just edit no, it's you, that's what you do. That's what you do, and you do it so well. And we wouldn't have it the other day. Um, all, all I know... Okay, I found a thing that's, like... Okay, like, these things are known. You know? Uh, Let me... Hold on. So we know, all right, about Fred Bear. All right, this and this is between the original location and the second games, or it's before the original location, which and the original location, which is the unknown location, is before the second games location. And then 
the first game's location, and then wherever the fuck Five Nights 3 is, I'm not, it's like a haunted house. But Fredbear, let's see, it was a smaller establishment, and Freddy was the only character there, I think. Also, Springtrap maybe was the only character, was a character there as well? I've heard that. Mm. And I've also heard, like, uh, Freddy or Golden Freddy, like, I guess that's why he's a different color. Yeah. And the business, and the, it shut down because the child was murdered outside of the restaurant. And then they had to sell the business to Fazbear Entertainment. And then they opened up Freddy Fazbear's, uh, the original, which was before 2. Uh, in, yeah, in Five Nights 2, they talk about a, a previous location, which is the original location. Mm-hmm. And it featured all the characters from the first game, as well as the marionette puppet. And... They don't know whether Balloon Boy is there or not, but I guess that's not really important. <laughs> uh, it w- and all they all that's known for sure, like fact about this location, is that it was shut down for health code violations, which was what appeared to be blood and mucus oozing and strange smell from the animatronics, and then it was left to rot before being reopened as the location in the second game. But there are no known murders that are associated with this location. Any murders that happened at the location are pure speculation. Do you think... Do you think working there makes people go crazy? Maybe. Like, I... Crazy people? You have killer animatronics going after you. I'd say that'd make you a little insane. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I did fast food when I was a teenager, and that made me a little bit crazy. (laughs) <laughs> fast food never again <laughs> alright and the, sec- the second game's location which is what they refer to in the game as the new location and then that was used to build rebuild the company's reputation after the murder a- or after there was a health code violation at the first one and then on day three of the second one that's when the five children were lured into the back room by the guy in the Golden Freddy suit. Okay. So they're saying and that, then the, that that's, the five so that's are separate from children that were killed. Yeah. But we don't. There, there aren't any like. I don't think there's any like. Proven murders that happened, or at least murders that were discovered at the original, but they just well, but. I guess we know that at least a few took place because of the blood and the strange smell coming from the animatronics. Well, that could have that could be explained by just paranormal activity. And if there was a kid like killed at the diner, it could be that he's just haunting wherever you know the like the establishment goes. Yeah. Or the guy mm-hmm. that killed. If he's still working at the place, he could just be haunting that particular security guard. And and because well, that's right, a good point. The day the day after night six is when Jeremy Fitzgerald is changed to the day shift. And then that day that he was changed to the day shift was the yeah. night of eighty seven. And then that we can only assume that he was the victim. Mm. And oh, but that I Jeremy I think Fitzgerald was the victim of the bite of eighty seven. That had never occurred to yes. me. Huh. Because he was changed to the day shift. And then that day was when the bite occurred, which is the day he was changed to the day shift, which was, I think, the day that it was going to close, but they had one more birthday party. Yeah, that's what it said on the phone call. And there's a, yeah. the phone guy made about make sure, he made a point of saying make sure that you make sure the animatronics don't hurt anyone. So that would make, make more sense if he was the victim of the bite trying to protect someone else type deal. Yeah. Which is another, another reason I would think but, Phone Guy wouldn't be by, because he seems rather genuinely concerned about the animatronics attacking people. I, I can't think of Phone Guy. Like, I think you're, you're right. He, he does. I, I definitely think there is more, more to him, like, just being this, like, nice, kind of nerdy, awkward guy. Like, I think it, he seems to know more than he's letting on. Um, 
uh, like I don't because uh, the sort of slight social awkwardness and kind of desperation in the way that he's performed like leads me to believe that you know he's a bit probably a bit of a social recluse within the company and not that popular and seen as a bit of a weirdo and like you know how occasionally you get the one person who like in a horror film or something like they're the conspiracy theorist they know yeah. more than everyone else but everyone just thinks they're nuts like I don't know maybe he's that guy Mm-hmm. Is there mm-hmm. what? What's the sort of um, like current position on? Because one of the other game theories things was um, that Mike Schmidt might be purple guy, that he might be the killer. That was the first. That was the game theory on the first game. Like, it, is that pretty much like? Are there things in the timeline that mean that couldn't possibly be the case, or is that still open for debate? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like just two being a prequel and having all this shit obviously happen before one, it just oh, seems like... Yeah. yeah, like, why would have Mike Schmidt been around then when he's, like, supposedly... Yeah. yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. I mean, it didn't seem like to me. Like, you know, it never kind of got mentioned again when Five Nights 2 came out. Mm. And, you know... It, it and we don't even know who you play as in the third game, do we? They I have, just realized that. Do they name him like? Do you ever see a paycheck or anything? I can't remember. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. See a paycheck? No. No, That's it's just at the end of the game it gives you the article that the place burned down. That's only after nightmare mode. They don't even give you that after the fifth night. They don't. Oh. Nope. At the fifth night, mm-hmm. what happens after the fifth night? I don't remember. You unlock. You unlock nightmare mode. Yeah, but it, the usually the, the other one that you had is the deaths of uh, this. To, to get the right. true ending, to get the true ending, which is. Uh, night 3 was way different. Okay, to get the true ending, you have to beat all five nights and then go back and beat them all again to get all the little, like, mini games. Because you can only get them by, like. I think on night 4, you have to click on cupcakes. Yes. Yeah. Or, like. Or, like, on night 2, you have to click on Balloon Boy. You know, like, you have to go and get all of the, like, little Easter egg games to actually get the true ending. Yeah, that's, which is pretty that's much what... the end of the fifth night, isn't it? They, they yeah, do the they... mini-game, and then you get the, either the, they're still haunting or they're relieved. Right. That's so right. there is... Yeah. Yeah, they don't tell you who you're playing as. You're just some... Yeah, all the mini-games are pretty much... What I got from it is that you were essentially, like setting those children's souls free. Yeah. 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 Somehow. I'm not sure how. <laughs> yeah, I'm still not I'm still not I'm not sure how that works in the realm of reality. It's well, I think it's metaphor. Oh go on. <laughs> what? You're playing as Dean Winchester in three. That's my theory. <laughs> yeah. I well I kind of thought like and again this is so much of my theorizing about the game is just me making shit up like You know what would be really cool is (laughs) if the guy, the security guard in the third game was the, uh, like, niece or nephew of one of the murdered children and he was working there in order to, like, find out more shit and, like, avenge his family member or whatever. I don't know. Maybe. No. That'd be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. But that's just me making shit up. That's just me, like, well, if I was Scott Cawthorn, this is what I'd be thinking but really i have no idea. for me that's the most fun thing about this game clearly clearly scott coffin is on like a, a higher plane of existence than we are yeah what he has in mind is going to be so much more badass although uh, yeah. the game the game that he made before five nights at freddy's from what i've seen is fucking terrible <laughs> it's got do you know why do you know why he decided to do five nights at freddy's in the first place yeah yeah, because everyone said the little beaver guy in his kids game was fucking terrifying and looked like an animatronic, and he was like, "Well, okay, fuck you." <laughs> I, I think make something scarier. But and like, good, good for him. Like, that's I. I think that's quite a cool reaction. Mm-hmm. Good job turning so, into something good. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, sure. I can, I can either make. I think, yeah, he was pretty much like, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do this, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to quit. And clearly it worked. Clearly. Three times. 
the gem. It is like the very definition of life giving you lemons and making lemonade. Mm. So, so who is the guy on the phone in the first night of the third game? Is that just like a random employee, yeah. I guess? Yeah. Phone or phone phone dude, I think is what they yeah. called him. <laughs> phone just dude, the guy I'm... that was running or helping yeah. run the haunted. I think thing. It, it, I think this was his uh, master creation. He's like, dude, we're dude. gonna we're gonna make this into a killer haunted house. Bruh. We gotta get all the shit from the other places. I was really fucking happy not to hear any more from him. He was annoying. <laughs> you know what? You know what I found now that I'm looking at a transcript of Phone Guy? He said, Hey, glad you came back for this is the first night. Glad you came back for another yeah. night. I promise it'll be a lot more interesting this time. We found some great rel- relics over the weekend and we're tracking down a new lead, like right now. So let me update you real quick so you can get to work. Like the attraction opens in like a week. So we better make sure everything works and nothing catches on fire. Yep. Yeah. That was. So the, by that point, the attraction hadn't even opened yet. Yeah. <laughs> they, they hadn't had finished. Uh, they had not finished collecting all of the nifty yeah. stuff. You could argue that the guy that's working there, if if he knows what he's doing, and ended up setting the kids soul free, that he just burned down the place so that nobody would take the animatronics again and yeah. potentially disturb either the children or the murderer. Yeah, really oh. fucked up. Spring trucks well, right yeah, now. fucked up. You had one job, buddy. <laughs> you had one job. You knew that. I knew the second that I heard he's like, this place could catch on fire. I'm like, foreshadowing. It's gonna catch on fire. Yeah. And the fact that all the animatronics, the the hallucinations, look burnt. That was another yeah, thing that, that they yeah. pointed out on the wiki. Like yeah, that it was for. Yeah, Looks yeah. Really, they really do look uh, burnt, if not just like really fucked up with age, but then their hallucinations, so I guess they would get affected by that. So, them. I would assume that, like, the the audio training cassettes, like, what they play for you for the rest of the game, like, that's from the original location. Yeah, yeah, that's them. Um... So, so was Phone Guy around in the original location, then? He I was... Think he guy, have... I think Phone Guy's been around for a long time. I think that's why he knows so much. He knows more than he says. Mm. But he wasn't around for Fazbear's Diner, because he had trouble remembering... Yeah, because he couldn't remember the name of the building yeah um, yeah but he, yeah. he was around for at least until freddy fazbear's pizzeria has been around but not the diner however many buildings that may be this is a factor in that it's a franchise so there's probably it could have potentially been ones all over the place yeah but all the mm-hmm. shit happened in this particular yeah. location apparently i really want them to open a real one i think now that they've done a <laughs> That would be that would be uh, fucked up. They've done a crusty crab from SpongeBob, so I kind of feel like this One is just the natural. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do it. I'd do the hell out of that, and I'd play all the parts. <laughs> At the same time, it'd be At awesome. At the same time, be the most self-indulgent thing ever. <laughs> hmm. Um. Does anyone else have any more, like, theorizing? Also, I I have I have uh, thought that like they have like the thing of phone guy with like holding like he looks like he's holding like a banana, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, I do. I think it's like a handle. Like, a lot of people just, thought that that was supposed to be a phone, so that's why the I theory don't know what we're talking about in the in the purple uh, purple movie? guy. Yeah, in one of the mini games, oh. in the second game. Some of the the pictures of Purple Guy, not all of them, when he's chasing you yeah. throughout the pizzeria, he looks like he's holding something, and to a lot of people that look like a phone. So everybody assumed that the well, Purple Man like, is supposed to be Phone Guy. It's pixels. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but then you but then you learn like the the animatronic like mascot suits came with like a hand yes. crank. Yeah. So now everybody's so they... going with that was a hand crank. Yeah. So it's like a hand crank, I think. Yeah. So it makes. Sense. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think it was a phone because I'm like, oh, he's running around with like a cell phone, a cell phone in 1987. Oh yeah, that's a, or a cordless phone, but even then, it's a bit of a stretch. I mean, what I really like about but why and why would he be carrying around? Yeah, a phone, exactly. You know? so then, unless the I think the reason that they said that was because they that was Scott's way of trying to give you the hint hint that a purple guy is phone guy, but he just really to... likes bananas. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he likes purple bananas. What's, yeah. so, what's so great about the mini games is because they're like 
it's like pixelated um and like atari graphics and everything like i feel like part of the kind of cleverness of that is that it makes it purposefully vague so like yeah. Uh, you're, only, you're you're only seeing like little glimpses of things and things that could be other things so you kind of have to like fill in a lot of the gaps yourself i definitely think like that's intentional like it's more than just making them look retro like it's doing that for that specific purpose i'm still confused about the safe room okay i just realized i'm still very confused about the safe room because night four or five Phone guy says, like, it's a reminder of the company policy concerning the safe room, and it's used for equipment, mm-hmm. and then that customer should never, ever be taken back there. Yeah. And then it got boarded up at some point? Yeah. It was basically, it, the way they said it, it basically sounded like, um, if anything happens with one of the spring suits, don't bleed on the customers, go in the safe room type deal. Yeah. You don't want to upset the customer. Customers would be, I'd like to go bleed see, out in the safe room. I'd like to see how you could walk <laughs> or quickly jaunt to said safe room. you got to count on your two Wall co-workers. Spring. Teamwork, they got to lift you up and shove you in the safe While room. you're in agonizing pain and disabled. And... and then and then what they say, what he says the next night, and I'm reading this, he says, this is to inform all employees that due to budget restrictions, the previously mentioned safe rooms will be sealed at all locations, including this one. Work crews will be here most of the day constructing a false wall over the old door base. Nothing is being taken out beforehand. That's why I thought maybe they... So if you've left anything inside, it's your own Yeah, fault. that's why I thought that they friggin' found Purple Guy. And they were just like, fuck it, board it up, don't tell anybody. And Yeah, and then maybe, like, that's... I, they And then, and then fo- I'm assuming, phone dude or someone related to, like, the horror attraction, like, found that. And then brought it to the horror well, attraction. What he said was, uh, um, he got a lead from somebody who used to work there, or, or who had yeah. boarded up uh, or did maintenance in that area, uh, in that building. Yeah. So I think that the the building of Freddy's um, old pizzeria is still kind of hanging around and dilapidated. Uh-huh. And I guess when they decided they were going to make this horror attraction, they went rummaging through all the you know all the shit that's around. Yeah. It also says management also requests that this room not be mentioned to family, friends, or insurance <laughs> yeah. representatives. Um, Thanks again, and remember to smile. You are the face of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Did they, um, did they ever translate the last phone call in the first game? Did anyone ever successfully translate that? Uh, I think it's just static. It was it? supposed to be supposedly a, um, a quote from something. Like, if you played it backwards, uh... I can look I think it up. it was up. something to do with the joy of creation or something like that. But it was some really random fucking biography or something. It was at about... The, at the end of the good ending of the third game, you get that thing come up on the screen, the they will know the joy of creation or something like that. Like, do we know what that means or what that's referencing? Like, or is it just meant to be like an anomaly? I don't know. I think I don't know. I think it's just open ended. Yeah. All right, the phone call on you're talking about the first game, yeah, correct? Yeah. It says on the wiki the phone call from night five is not actually spoken by phone guy, but it's likely one of the animatronics in a deep garbled demonic sounding voice. And when the audio clip is played backwards and some post processing is applied to it, it's it is rendered into a difficult to understand and hard to translate garble. While numerous possible fan translation exists, the most recent speculation is that the call is in fact an excerpt from the book Autobiography of a Yogi. It has not been confirmed. It is simply speculated because of the frequent match-ins uh, in hand-translated phrases that most translators of the call have found. Huh? And then it's like a complete, almost a complete passage. Huh. What's it called again? The Something of Yogi. One sec. I'm actually going to look up what, what it means. I'm assuming they don't mean the kind of barbaric character. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Millie says, yeah, it's called Autobiography of a Yogi. I don't know what it means. It's some book. It's like a spiritual book. 
from India or something. But the excerpt is like something like it is lamentable that a mass agricultural development is not speeded by fuller use of your marvelous mechanisms. Would it not be easily possible to employ some of them in quick laboratory experiments to indicate the influence of various types of fertilizers on plant growth? You are right. Countless uses of those instruments will be made by future generations. The scientist seldom knows contemporaneous reward is enough to process the joy of created service. Also, this book is in another language. <laughs> so that's like a, a rough translation. I think Maybe that's why it absolutely no sense to me when I read it. <laughs> yeah. It is creepy. But again, it's like garbled and played backwards. and Yeah, and in another language. It's like, it's like when you play a Beatles song backwards and you hear like, yeah. Paul is dead, or whatever, you know? You get the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah, and you, <laughs> it matches up with the Wizard of Oz, yeah. <laughs> or like Satan, or whatever. <laughs> Satan is good. <laughs> Satan is good. Um, I don't have anything else to add. Does anyone else? Where is uh, I, I was asking uh, whatever who's the, everybody's favorite animatronic was. I like Balloon Boy. Really, I hate Balloon Boy. I love. I he's cute. <laughs> I like um, the look he makes when he says, you know, he's like, "Hi, hello." I like when he's go, "Hello, hello." <laughs> That's uh, cute. But I, I like. like I like Chica the best, um, because she never fucking leaves my window, um... <laughs> she um, likes you! <laughs> she does like me, and that's awesome. Um, I really don't like some of the Chica fan art, however. Oh god, yeah, even that, sexy Chica. Yeah, that can fuck off and die. I don't know. I, d I don't want to be intolerant of furries, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. No, no. There's there's some parts of the community that ship like the animatronics with Markiplier. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of weird. Uh, it's kind of that's kind of understatement. It's kind of only kind of weird. Oh god. Well, I liked how I liked how in um the third game Mark was kind of flirting with did either was it Bonnie or Freddy he was flirting with kept offering her tea tea and toast. I don't remember. I think it was Bonnie. Bonnie's not even a girl, though. Oh, Bonnie's a guy. Oh, maybe, maybe that was just my head cannon. I, I was actually thinking earlier, like I'd quite like to write a phone guy and phone dude fan fiction. <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. god. <laughs> so, do you have a favorite? Like phone guy being all like awkward and nervy, and phone dude being all like chill. <laughs> Pretty hot. What? Yeah. What's your favorite? I don't know. They're all diabolical. <laughs> That's what makes him fun. My favorite is Foxy. Because he's a fox, and he's Ooh. a pirate, and he'll fuck your world up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like Mangle. Say I like Mangle? Yeah. I can see yeah. It. But I think I like, I think I like Mangle because it's kind of gender ambiguous. A gender? Yeah. Or, uh, cause gender fluid? Because Foxy's kind of, Foxy is masculine, which is what Mangle was, uh, came from design wise. Yeah. And then, and then they turned they kinda pink. made it all feminine looking with the paint job. Yeah. And then the dance kids kept, kept taking them apart. <laughs> Damn <laughs> kids. About, um what's kind of cool about Foxy is like the fact that like she's a bit more of an or he's a bit more of an anomaly. Like you never know like like Bonnie and Chica, they just kind of appear at your door. Whereas like Foxy like sometimes Sometimes he's like peeking out behind the curtains. Sometimes he's not there. Sometimes the curtains are wide open. Sometimes he's just like, "Fuck you!" with his head at the side of the camera, and then he kills you. <laughs> that was something that got yeah. me when I saw Foxy out of the out of Pirates Cove, but just uh, uh, in the camera enough to tilt his head. Yeah, that was creepy. As and I was like, "Oh no, thank you very much." I think I just. <laughs> the hook, and I was like, "What the fuck is yeah. that?" Yeah, that too. And, and then the first time I saw him My... run down the hallway and just that was another the door. One. I was like, "Well, when he you're moved. a son of a bitch, I like you." When he <laughs> ran down that hallway, I was like, "Oh hell no, they are moving now." <laughs> I like 
my favorite gif, like, one of my favorite gifs of all time is uh, when he's running down, it's like a gif of him running down the hall, and it says, Swiggity Swooty coming for oh, that no. booty. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I find spring traps movements more disturbing because they're far more human. Yeah, well, I hate in Five Nights Three when you see like I think it's like I guess it's Phantom Freddy and he's walking across your window. Yeah. It's and horrible. I shimmy shimmy. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Oh, honey. <laughs> I, thought <that> <laughs> I, I thought that was funny. Jumping along, that's fucking scary. I mean, that's why Foxy's creepy because he can run. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that. I need to look that up. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think it's even just a fucking video. So I think someone made like a ten minute long swiggity swiggity coming for that booty of just a loop of Foxy. <laughs> I found the gif, Greer. That's really great. Oh, swiggity swiggity, <laughs> yeah. Coming for that booty. <laughs> that's really good. Can we call the podcast that, please? Yeah, I'll I'll add that as like a oh now Steam monster update. I'll add that as like a like a that was a subtitle. Okay, sweet. I don't want <laughs> Steam update right now. Anyway, so that's our <laughs> that's our dumb podcast. Yay! Our podcast. It was so good. Um, <laughs> I um, how should we end it? Thank you guys for sharing your timeline with us. Oh, yeah, your timeline. That was amazing. We wouldn't have had a podcast without it. Thank you, guys. Oh, welcome. Fucking <laughs> Harmon sisters, everyone. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Sarah. It was lovely talking to you. No yeah. problem. You're always welcome. Yeah, mm. definitely. I'm going to go to the beer shop before bedtime, so <laughs> I will see you on the next podcast. Oh, God. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I was not expecting it. Like Markiplier now? Yeah. It's your sweet Markiplier. I'm going to add, like, a scream at the end of this. Do it. I'm going <laughs> to do it right now. And that's where it's going to be. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.